Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KOAN Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. Dr. James Carafano with us. He's the vice president for the Catherine Shelby Colum Davis Institute for National Security and Foreign Policy at the Heritage Foundation. Uh, He directs Heritage's team of foreign and defense policy experts in four centers on the front lines of international affairs. He's a 25-year Army veteran. Uh, He's a graduate of West Point, master's and doctorate from Georgetown University. He's been with Heritage since 2003, senior research fellow there in Homeland Security and Missile Defense. Jim, welcome back to the Joe Miller Show. Hey, it's good to be with you. So you've been following what's going on in the Middle East a little bit on restoring liberty with the gains that ISIS has made, right. especially in Iraq. And there's been a lot of criticism, and, and recently even more, about what the Obama administration is doing or, or is failing to do to combat the spread of ISIS, the gain of territory. Of course, uh, Ramada being the most recent large town they gained. Could you first give our audience a little bit of an overview of what's happened over the last several weeks with ISIS gains, and then kind of give us our view of what the administration should be doing but is not? Right. So we kind of reached really kind of a status quo. So what we found is is there are the Iraqis do not have the capacity to take the offensive against ISIS, right? So the, the Kurds can defend the Kurds. The Shias can probably defend Baghdad. Um, the Sunni tribes are kind of trapped in the middle, and... What we found is even where you make gains against ISIS in some areas, they they found other places where to go on the offensive. So we're not getting rid of ISIS. And so we have to start with the facts. What the president's doing now is not going to work, right? We know that because we've been at this a year, and we're, we're not getting anywhere. And we're unlikely what, to get What anywhere. is he doing now? Well, essentially what, what he's he doing? doing now is he's, he's, he's providing enough support so the country doesn't collapse until he leaves office. It, it's not it, – so ISIS is, sta- I mean, stable, growing in some areas, pushing back in others, but ISIS is rooting in, basically, and the president's doing just enough not to lose. Do we have the, any the troops on the ground at all? Do, yeah, we, yeah, we do. I mean, they're not, they're not in front-line fighting combat things, but we have troops on the ground – Working with the Iraqis in some cases, calling in airstrikes in some cases, doing training, but it's it's not an it's not there is no capacity there to push that back, and it's not coming from anywhere else. I mean, Jordan is barely hanging on by a thread. I mean, half the country is is refugees. I mean, they're just and they're under pressure. The, Saudi Arabia is really tied down dealing with this uh, civil war in in Yemen, and and the regime change. I mean, they really can't. The Egyptians are consolidating Egypt, right? So there, there's nobody to, there's nobody else to ride to the rescue. So, and the president knows that, and the, and the president's caught between his, I ended the war, I'm not going back in, and uh, but I don't want to be embarrassed on my watch. I don't want to see all fall apart on my watch. So I'm, I'm going to provide enough until I leave office, and then it's somebody else's problem. That's, that's, that's the reality. We, we, we know that ISIS can be defeated, and they can be rolled back up. And we know that Iraq can be stabilized, and we know because we have facts for that. We had an enormous insurgency in 2007, and the U.S. presence, when it went in, broke the back of the insurgencies, and the, and the people stood up, and, and they took back their country. We know that when the U.S. troops were there as a strategic partner, things were pretty calm. There wasn't an opportunity to gap for ISIS or other groups, and, and it was country. When we left, you know, there, we, we demonstrated yet again that there isn't the sufficient capacity for themselves to do that. So we know what now, we know what's not working. We know what will work. Um, and then this is where we ought to have the real honest debate, and because this president's just going to continue to do what he does, which I think is uh, that no matter what side of the debate you're on, I, I think you have to be appalled by a president who's bas- basically saying. I don't care if people die. I don't care how many billions of dollars we spend. As long as I'm not embarrassed on my watch, that's all that matters. The, the debate is, is right. and when you look, do we care, right? Or should we care? Yeah. And when you look because at what, we, what the, the human cost, I mean, you look at the, especially the minorities in those areas, the Christian population and how they've right. taken it. You, you touched on something briefly about Jordan that kind of piqued my interest. Of course, Jordan, primarily refugees, real concern about it because of that refugee population tilting over it out of control. Is ISIS active at all within Jordan? Is there any reports of any type of terroristic or, or attacks, well, there are, there military are, there are action Jordanian, there? Yeah, well, there are Jordanians that have gone to the fight. Um, the, 
the ISIS has tried to slip across the border into Jordan. Jordan has a military on the border. But um, Jordan is, a, is a, a very key state because it's, it's kind of like a keystone because if Jordan collapses, dude, you're standing at the border of um, uh, Egypt and uh, Israel. I mean, and and literally the entire Middle East could unravel. It's you remember like Belgium right. was kind of the, the the key to opening up Western Europe for the Germans in World War in World War Two. Well, that's kind of what what Jordan is in in the Middle East. It's the it's the little finger in the dike, in the, and if the and, wow. and if and if that opens up, then the levees collapse and and who knows where this ends. I talked to a deputy foreign minister several years ago in Israel who was suggesting that the way to resolve the Palestinian-Israeli problem is to make Jordan basically a Palestinian state, which it seems that looking at the different, the various coalitions of power in the area, and obviously the Palestinians don't see eye to eye with ISIS, is right. that a potential answer to, to take to alleviating that threat of it turning into an ISIS territory? No, I mean, look, the Palestinians have been there forever. I mean, there's actually more refugees in Jordan than there are Palestinians. I mean, there are more refugees in Georgia than there are Jordanians. So there's a huge Palestinian right. population there already. And then you have this massive population from Syria, and you have refugees from Iraq. So um, the, 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 transforming Jordan into something else is, is not going to help anything. It's just going to destabilize further, just like allowing Iraq to devolve into pieces, which was that's not going to help anything because then you then you think about this if if Jordan's this fragile little state that's that's hanging on by a thread that if it collapses everything unravels then what do we gain by seeing Iraq devolve into basically three or four Jordans and the answer is we, then we so, have so, then we have three or four potential little states that can unravel and and, and everything can fall apart so what's the answer what should we be doing right now in Iraq to regain control and push back ISIS well I, I think the answer we know what the answer is is you have to put combat forces in there who can work with the Iraqis. Um, they'll give them the the confidence and the capability to stand up. Look, ISIS is not ten feet tall. These guys are are eminently defeatable. Now, not necessarily maybe as terrorists, but as an organized military entity, um, they don't have logistics. They they can't run a state. I mean, they can they can be rolled up. But the the problem you're going to face is having rolled them up somebody's going to have to stick around, otherwise you're going to have to do it all over again. So this really does call for, I mean, I, I think, to be honest, I think there was a time when we could have rolled up ISIS without the U.S. playing a larger role. I really do. Um, but it was it was uh, uh, well over a year ago when they were just starting out, and uh, if we had acted with a clarity when it started, the, the Iraqis, and given the Iraqis just a little bit, we could, probably could have handled this. But but we didn't, and there's no do-overs in history, so we are where we are. And then, then and, and there's this, less this gets, and there's less political support now too. Well, I mean, it, it, look, there, there's always less political support when the president doesn't want to do anything. You know, I mean, look look at this trade deal. I mean, the, the president's kind of half-hearted in it, and it's a tough thing to do, and it looks like a mess. Well, that's what happens when you you don't have presidential leadership. So the real question is, is what are we what are we doing there, right? If if it, if there's not an interest or a threat to us. Why are we even bothering if all we're basically doing is puttering around so we don't lose until the president goes and builds his presidential library? So that's, I think that's the question we have to face with. Um, I think it's a big problem for us. I think if, we'll, if events spin out of control in Iraq, you're going to wind up with a regional war in the Middle East, and you don't know where that's going to end, and it's going to impact the entire globe, and many, many people are going to die, and many, many people are going to get really, really scared, and, uh, and things can yeah, get I really th horrible. Yeah, I don't don't disagree with you that with that at all. Just briefly, uh, you mentioned before you came on Ebola. It's uh, raising its ugly head again. Got a minute left. Tell us what's going on there. Oh yeah, so there's a resurgence of Ebola cases in in West Africa. The problem is, is not really sure that the West Africans are are any have any greater capacity to to stem it from becoming an outbreak than it did before. So all the chaos and you know Ebola czars, what the hell are we doing to close the ports down? All that argument that we had last summer, we could well be wind up having it again this summer. How many cases? Um, it's just a handful of cases, but but the but but the the problem is 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 um, the 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 number of cases is rising. That's the problem, right? And it, and it's geographically right. spreading. Oh. Jim, I appreciate your insights. Thank you so much for coming on the Joe Miller Show again, giving your insights not just about the Middle East, but what's going on across the globe as a whole. We'll have you back uh, again, Dr. Jim Carafano. 
with the Heritage Group and obviously lots of experience in the areas that we talked about. Thanks again, Jim, for being on the show. All right. Good to be with you. All right. Stay with us. Joe Miller Show. We'll be back after these messages. 